my name is David Masters, and I'm the author of the Psychopath Victims Toolkit. A little about me, I've been consulting and counseling since the late 70s, early 80s. Occasionally, in the course of my coaching, I'd encounter a client that had to mitigate the damages in their life due to the influence of a third-party individual, a bad person. From my perspective, there was no such thing as a bad person, just lost souls wandering aimlessly through life with little regard for others. And so the advice that I gave to individuals in those days was very different than I might suggest now. What I learned was that there are people who are devoid of particular mental, emotional, and spiritual components that compromises their humanity when integrating with other persons. We call these people psychopaths, sociopaths, and a recent more political correctly referred to as being on the antisocial personality disorder spectrum. That said, there are thousands of variables and no two psychopaths are identical, but they do share many similar characteristics. So, how can you tell if you're dealing with a psychopath? Here are some common signs that would indicate you might be dealing with a psychopath in your life. Charismatic. Psychopaths are charismatic and are able to attract supporters easily. They are wonderful speakers who are able to engage their audience and can easily engage the emotions and attention of those fortunate enough to be in their presence. They exaggerate stories, skewing the truth for their self-serving benefit, and will go so far as to lie and place themselves in someone else's story and claiming it as their own. They're smart. Psychopaths are intellectual. They have a gift of having incredibly sharp wit and intelligence, enabling them to masquerade as highly educated as they bob and weave socially in live situations. This also makes them excellent con artists, able to conceive, plan, and execute elaborate schemes while staying one step ahead of the authorities. No feelings. Psychopaths have no feelings. They do not grieve, they are incapable of feeling guilt, shame, remorse. This empowers them to easily victimize anyone. They will enthusiastically engage in anything that bolsters their position at someone else's expense. They don't love. They're incapable of giving or receiving love, but terribly acute at acting as though they are madly in love, if it will help them achieve their desired result. They're great actors and performers, giving them the ability to create any perception of themselves that will achieve for them their desired result. Even though they can appear to have emotions and use them as tools to manipulate their victims, let there be no doubt they have no real feelings whatsoever. Impulsive Psychopaths are impulsive often acting or speaking without thinking through potential consequences of their words or actions, and they're more likely to spontaneously take risks. They're free of repercussion since they see themselves as above the law or the constraints of the social norm. No social filters, consequences, or guilt. None. Winners. Psychopaths never lose. They'll dominate anyone who gets in their way, will viciously defend their position, often telling lies and spinning wild tales in an effort to discredit anyone with the inclination to disagree with them. If you're naive enough to challenge them, be aware that they will wield their powers of persuasion to make you look like a fool for questioning them, which presumes that they believe themselves to be never wrong. Psychopaths are always right. They never apologize, don't feel any remorse for hurting others, and are incapable of feeling guilt. If asked to apologize, a psychopath will often strike out and attack their victim rather than admit they have made a mistake or misstep. Now ask yourself, is the person you're dealing with a psychopath? Are they charismatic, smart, have no feelings, impulsive, always the winner, and never wrong? Chances are you're face-to-face -face with a psychopath. You're probably saying to yourself, I knew it! There was something wrong with that person! Well, you're realizing that you should rely more on your intuition that may have been warning you when you met this person in the first place that there was something not quite right. If only we would learn to listen more to our gut, we would live happier, safe, and secure lives free from those who seek to exploit us. If nothing else, that is the lesson to be learned from encountering a psychopath is to trust your instincts and to not let yourself be taken advantage of by a cunning predator.
I would not now be an expert in the field of psychopathy had I not had my own first-hand experience with an evil psychopath that opened my eyes to the realities of the disorder. And now I have a deep regret for all the folks that I was ill-equipped to be compassionate enough to reach out to them appropriately. In this way, I may have attracted the psychopathic presence in my own life to benefit those whom it is my calling to assist along their life's journey. So we've established that you found yourself to be the unfortunate victim or mark of a psychopath, sociopath, or someone amidst the antisocial personality disorder spectrum. What can you do about it? Number one, create separation. The very first thing to do is to create as much separation as you can as soon as possible between yourself and the psychopath. You need to distance yourself physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, and in any other way possible from the psychopath and cease any and all communication with him or her, period. Any further communication or contact after correctly identifying a psychopath will only lead to more risk or potential loss to you and yours. Be aware that as you distance yourself, the psychopath will try to cling to you or play on your emotions in order to further victimize you. Don't fall for that manipulation or pity ploys from this point forward. You're done with that. They'll try to appeal to your feelings, but keep in mind they have no feelings and no regard for yours. Except as a method to further victimize you. You might cut them off. No, you must cut them off. No contact means no contact. Though this may not be possible if you work or live with a psychopath, but that will be an issue to be handled specifically and independently of the scope of this primary message. Number two, get help. Next, you need a strong support system. You should seek out a professional, a counselor, or therapist with experience in dealing with psychopaths. Note that early in my practice, even though individuals sought me out for assistance, I was ill-equipped to offer them the support that they needed at the time. How can someone understand what you're going through if they don't understand what you're going through? Because, and I'm guilty of this as anyone, things can't really be all that bad. But they are. And they can be very bad. And they can get worse if you do not take the appropriate actions. Seek out a specialist. Or at least someone with experience dealing with victims of psychopaths. 3. Be quiet about it. Do not talk to your friends about the psychopath. You might think this is a good time to reach out to those in your circle of friends that you can depend on for support, but chances are, if the psychopath has done his or her homework, they've already gotten to them in advance. If your friends have not been compromised by the psychopath, there's a good chance that they will be. And be forewarned, very few people can compete with the ability to manipulate the minds of the unsuspecting like the psychopath. Keep things quiet. Do not confront your psychopath, engage in a battle of wits, challenge or attempt an intervention with your psychopath. This will only open you up for further potential pain, suffering, and potential loss. The psychopath has the uncanny ability to turn anything you say against you. Don't give them the opportunity. And number four, stay strong. Stay the course. If the psychopath counterattacks you, don't respond. If you communicate anything to this person, it should be only silence. Be steadfast and unshakable, solid as a rock. He or she must realize that you cannot be manipulated or bullied into making any kind of response, no matter what they do or say. Keep a good posture, positive outlook, smile, and be confident, even if you don't feel like it, at all times. Any indication of weakness will be seen as an opportunity for them to insert themselves or launch another attack. 5. Protection by Documentation Document everything. Keep hard copies of everything you can to document any interaction or statements made by your psychopath and keep it at a secure location. Watch what you say. Act as if every word you speak is being recorded and may be read to a jury in the future, word for word, and spun out of context in an effort to make you look like a lunatic. Maybe someday, people who once trusted you will see the truth. But even so, if your psychopath was a masterful one, they will wonder about you, even after the true colors of the psychopath are made known. So don't hold on to the false hope that one day, being vilified by all the illicit accusations that were made against you, in most cases, the effects are permanent, though they may fade over time, maybe in the afterlife. 6. 
Forgive yourself. Most of all, forgive yourself. You are not the perpetrator here. You are the victim. And as a victim, you may have found yourself in a vulnerable or compromising situation. You may feel like the fool. But you are not the fool. Anyone can be victimized by the proficient psychopath. And it happens every day in all walks of life and all levels of society. You could not have seen this coming. But now that you are aware, you are less likely to become a victim again. And maybe you can help others to see the signs, or at least be aware that there are evil people out there, the virtual wolves in sheep's clothing, who seek to destroy the lives of others without remorse. Thank you for joining me for this message. It is my hope that this information will help save you and others from further potential pain, suffering, or loss at the hands of a psychopath. Pass this information on to others who may be potential victims. For more information or to contact me, visit psychopathvictims.com.